Hi, I'm Matt Brunig. I'm here with Cool Tools today to show you how to make a Pierce Silhouette Pendant. Today we're going to be making a Silhouette Pendant and I chose a bat because Halloween is coming up. You can choose the, whatever silhouette you might want to cut out of a flat piece of silver. And so I'm going to use some 18 gauge sterling silver, some open link chain. This is a three millimeter oval, a uh, pair of round nose pliers, some 16 gauge sterling silver wire, a saw frame, super glue, saw blades, these are 6 aught saw blades, some polishing paper, and a bench pin. All right, so for the first step, I'm gonna take my spooky bat and I'm gonna glue it to this piece of sterling silver. So what I like to do is I take the super glue and make a bit of a puddle more towards one side wherever you're going to stick your bat. And you wanna make sure that you have enough that it covers the entire, entire bottom side of your piece of paper. I'm actually using the paper to kind of move that glue around so that we have a fairly consistent surface area that it's sticking to. You have kind of a very short work time with super glue. It dries quickly and once it sticks, it sticks. So I'm going to try and get this as close to the edge. My starting point for the piercing is going to start at the wing. We glue it down. You can kind of see where that glue is sticking because it comes a little, becomes a little bit transparent. And you wait a few minutes for that to dry and we'll continue. So I'm going to use a standard V slot bench pin. What's nice about this is you can clamp it to any surface. You don't necessarily have to have a jeweler's bench. You can just have a, a a place where you do your projects at home, just kind of clamp it to the side of any normal table. So you put the clamp through like that and then onto your surface and snug it up pretty tight. You may not want to use this on grandma's antique table, but you know, your work table where you do your crafting at home is, is just fine. And now you have a surface to do your cutting. So the only thing that this, does, this bat does not have is a place to hang it from your chain. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw two little circles approximately here and here. And we're gonna pierce around those circles and then drill a hole after our bat is cut out so that we can hang our chain. Okay, so we're now, now we're gonna get our saw frame ready. And um, these, these are laser gold saw blades. This is a six aught which is a fairly skinny blade. When you're describing the thickness of a, of a saw blade, um, it starts uh, with zero, which is, is in the jeweler's world is a fairly heavy uh, saw blade. And so um, the skinnier the saw blade, the more likely you are to break them. The very skinniest on the market is an dot. So this is uh, pretty close to, to the skinniest. Um, what's, what's handy about a skinny saw blade is that uh, you can get in and do some more fine detail. With something like this, there's not a whole lot of fine detail. So if you're concerned about breaking a whole lot of saw blades, you may want to go with a heavier blade, like a 4 aught or bigger. Uh, but you do have more dexterity the narrower blade that you're using. And so what's tricky about getting these out of here, they always want to pull one, one way because they have teeth. And that's the way that they pull. So you got to loosen that little piece of wire that comes on there and then pull one out. Now there are a lot of different saw frames on, on the market. This I would say is the Ferrari of jeweler's saw frames. This is a new concept and uh, what's nice about this, it has a lot of adjustments here uh, so that you can, you can make the, the blade as tight as you want. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have a Ferrari. You can start with a Volkswagen, uh, which, you know, a standard jeweler saw frame will work. And so that you want to make sure that the, the, the blade 
um, basically you're feeling some friction against the teeth of the blade and you want, you want the teeth to be coming downward so that you're cutting with the downstroke of the saw. You thread it in there, tighten up there. Now you can snug that blade up by ro rotating. Whereas, whereas more of a traditional old school saw frame, you have to you have to push with your chest to tighten up and then and then use the bottom one here to tighten. But this is this is pretty nice because you can tighten or loosen just with the the turn of that knob right there. All right, so we have our piece here ready to cut out. Um, I've got my saw ready to go. It's on there and then I'm also going to use a little bit of this cut lube on it. That will help keep the blade slick as you're cutting around. Sometimes you do need to stop uh, maybe halfway around your piece and then apply a little bit more of this just to keep things moving along smoothly. I usually like to start with um, the side of the piece that is closest to the edge so that we're, uh, there, there's less material waste throughout the whole process. All right, so I'm starting right here at the corner and coming right up to the wing. And then if you can see, I try and stay just a little bit outside of my, my silhouette image. Every once in a while stopping, blowing off the additional silver dust that accumulates on your piece as you're cutting. All right, so we're coming up to our first circle. So what I like to do is rather than try and go in and make that corner tight, I start out like that, leaving a little, little bit that I'm gonna have to cut out later. But I'm gonna cut out the majority of the silhouette first and then work some detail, all using the saw frame. Okay, so I'm taking a little creative license here. Uh, the, the points of the bat's ears are a little bit pointy, so I'm, I'm going a little bit rounded around the outside of it, so it's a little bit more user-friendly when you're wearing it. I'm gonna do the same down here at the base with the tail, just a, a little bit more rounded, so it's less likely to, to poke you. Um, now, I'm probably about a quarter of the way around the bat. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit more lubricant to the blade while, while it's in there. There's a couple ways that you can do this. You can do it like that, or you can, this, you have to be careful. You loosen the bottom blade like that, and then you can pull it right out of the silhouette. Say if you need to retighten or if you break a saw blade, um, you know, that's a good way to pull that out and you're less likely to poke your fingers. All right, so I've reached the end of my bat. Um, unfortunately, the frame you can see is tapping into the end, so I'm not gonna be able to make the corner to make it all the way around. So what I'm gonna do is unhook the bottom of the blade like that, pull it on through, and then restart at this side. And I'll be able to go along the bottom side of the bat and then meet at the, at the end without bumping into the end of the silver. Of course, there's another way around this. You can cut your silver in half, you know, so that you're using a smaller piece. Uh, several, several different ways to skin that bat. So I've made it almost all the way around and you can see that I've stayed a little bit outside of my lines. I'm gonna put in some, uh, some detail after after a bat is, is free from the, the big chunk. Uh, so what I'm doing is making the last curve here on all the points of the ring, wings. I made them a little bit more rounded there again, just to make it a little bit more user friendly. All right. 
Now flip them over and you can kind of check out your details and things like that. See if there's anything that you really don't like about it or you think that's ugly and, and correct that there. And so what I'm going to do is right here at the triangles, I'm actually going to use the opposite side to, to make these look a little bit more ring like there's a couple ways you can do this. You could just cut out the bat and then make some jump rings and then solder those onto the piece. Um, I kind of prefer to do this because then there's no solder seam between the wing and the attachment to the chain, you know, one, one less breaking point for the piece. So you can see that I'm just cutting a very small notch to make that look more ring like. All right. So what I'm going to use here is just a, a standard drill bit. Uh, you know, if you don't have a flex shaft, you can use a, a Dremel or, you know, probably even, you know, a, a good old Dewalt drill. And um, so I've, I've made a couple little divots just to guide my drill bit. You can do that like with a punch or, you know, a scribe of some sort. And so that basically what you're doing is you're just creating a small area for the, for the point of that drill to, to find a nest. What I like to do is drill a little bit. When you start to hear the drill bit chatter, add a little bit more lube to it and then and we're through. All right, so now we got to get our, our paper off of our bat. And um, this looks like it's going to peel up fairly well. Uh, the, the surface area of the sterling silver was pretty clean. And, and often it'll kind of loosen as you're cutting around. Uh, but if you're having any difficulty peeling the paper away, uh, you can always use acetone or uh, fingernail polish remover, which does contain a lot of acetone, but that peeled off pretty clean there. You can see that. So now I'm going to just do some detail work around the, the rings and clean those up. All right. So I'm just using a, um, this is a half round needle file, uh, by Euro tool. Um, and so what I'm going to do is where there's, there's a couple bumps in the road where I've gone around the bat's wings, I'm just kind of rounding that out a little bit. Not being too aggressive, just trying to knock out any uh, file or saw cuts, just to kind of smooth that over. You can see there's a couple wrinkles right there. In the... All right, I'm going to use this polishing paper. Uh, this is made by 3M. This particular one is pink and it's a 4,000 grit. Cool Tool sells a kit that has multiple grits inside of it from um, some that are more abrasive that are going to take out, say, scratches. Say we scratched it up using our bench pin here and uh, we need to be more aggressive. But this pink is a 4,000 grit. I like this because it doesn't put on a really high shine, which I think looks good with a flat piece like this because if you have a very bright shine on it, it tends to be very reflective and then also shows uh, fingerprints very easily. But over time, as you're wearing a piece, any piece, it's going to, to pick up some natural scratches and things like that just from everyday wear. So I think that the 4000 grit is a nice, somewhat shiny place to start. And you can see our our bat is looking pretty good. All right, so I'm using my round nose pliers to make uh, a couple rings to attach our bat to our chain. So what I like to do is just imagine that I'm coiling up a, a spring.
even though I'm only making two rings for this project, I like to coil it up so that I'm making three or more so that the rings here at the bottom of the coal coil are tighter. And then that way they're going to be even in size. So what I do is I straighten it out there and I take my saw frame. You can see that now I'm a lefty. So if you're right handed, you're going to be doing this in the opposite way. But what I like to do is take the, the length of wire, hold it with my thumb like this, and then slowly start a line to, to cut the jump rings. And a lot of times if you're having difficulty getting a line started, you want to start with an upstroke because you're not actually cutting. You're, ma you're making a perforated line going forward that your blade will, will naturally follow as you make the downstroke, which is actually doing the cutting on the rings. Once you've got that started, you're going to see that it is going to start cutting easier. If you want, if it's starting to chatter too much, you can add a little bit of lube to the, to the blade, but so far we're doing pretty well here. I am leading the blade down so that I'm, I'm cutting off my loose end first, and I think that that's going to break away. So now I just have my coil to deal with a little bit easier to handle. All right, so the main reason that I use a saw to make jump rings is um, you can certainly use a flush cutter, uh, but then what you end up having is you have one side of the jump ring with, which will have an angle depending on the type of cutter that you're using. And in the case with using a saw, you have a nice flat connecting point for the ring. You can see that those those are my, my bottom two rings of the coil, and so they're pretty even in size. I also use a 16 gauge uh, piece of wire. Uh, because, because it is going to be more rigid, you could certainly use a smaller gauge wire, like 18 gauge, but you would probably want to weld that to the chain that you intend to hook your bat to just because of the weight of the bat. But because this is a heavier gauge, I don't necessarily have to have this soldered in place to hold the bat securely to the chain. All right, so I have my two rings ready. And what I like to do, take a pair of flat nose, bend them out like that so that they're open. Then I'm gonna, what I am going to do is take the flat nose and actually bend them in. So if you can imagine you have an open ring you're, you're pushing it past like this so that that creates tension. The, the two ends of the wire going like this, we're going to pull those back and then that's going to make tension on the ring, holding it more securely to our bat. So I have one ring prepped. I've taken the chain and I've cut it to an 18 inch length. And so with the, the length of the bat, it's probably going to be about 20 inches in length total. I've already created tension on that ring. Nice and snug fit there. You can see um, because I use the saw, there's really, there's really no gap at all. Uh, if you want, you can use some polishing cloth on there just to make sure that there's no sharp edges. I'm going to reattach the other one.
make sure that it's good and tight. Now to decrease the chance of having any burrs, you can take your polishing cloth, work it like that. That ought to take any sharp edges off of your seam. And then course reinspect. I can see that this one is a little bit off right there. So I'm gonna realign that ring. There, and then that, once it's realigned, it'll rotate smoothly through the, the hole that you've pierced through the bat. These are also a really nice product. It's just like a polishing pad. You get any fingerprints that you see on your bat, as well as your rings. And you can see how well that's polishing up. Sterling silver does have a tendency to tarnish over time. It's because of the copper content in it. And so these pads are really nice to just kind of brighten it up. If you left your, your jewelry in a box and it has just developed some tarnish over time, that's uh, oxidation caused by you know, oxygen in the atmosphere. You can just take one of these and then just kind of rub on it very lightly and it'll brighten it up and make it ready to wear. So that's our finished bat pendant. Uh, as far as the length of chain, what you can do is you can make it long enough so that it goes over your head or you can pull the chain back, cut right at the back, and then add the clasp of your choosing, whether that be a lobster claw, spring ring, whatever's most user-friendly for you to wear and enjoy your bat pendant. I hope you enjoyed this video today and feel free to use your creativity on whatever type of silhouette pendant you might desire to make.